room stream. That's right. A room IRL stream is gonna be insane, boys. If we hit 69 subs, we're gonna have a threesome on that bed. It's gonna be. Welcome, welcome to one more episode of Create a Couple. My name is Indes. My name is Perry Cree. And uh, in this week, we're going to speak about the recent streamer awards, like the exciting news and maybe yeah. some breakthroughs that we are not expecting. Also, we're going to segue to new technologies that uh, are appearing. Vision Pro. Vision Pro and Soma from OpenAI. And then we're going to speak about more what is happening on our behind the scenes and a few struggles and challenges that we might be having in the relationship and the creation content, uh, content creation. Content there. creation. So, Streamer Awards, how was it? Okay, so I was super excited to watch Streamer's Award, but the timing was so strange for us. It was like it was starting at 11, 30, 11, and uh, it was until 4 p.m. a.m. Yeah. So I watched the red carpet thing, which was pretty exciting for me because I was very excited about like checking the clothes and, you know, those gala dresses and all. And uh, about the awards, I think pretty much we knew that who's going to win, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I, so, I feel like in the, there's there's not a lot of excitement when it comes to know the, the results the, yeah the results i feel like they are pretty much already telegraphed you know mm -hmm. who's going to be uh, i feel like maybe in the future they could uh, adjust a bit the format because i think yeah. right now it's just based on community votes <laughs> but i feel like maybe there should be like a judge or something that can go beyond who's more popular, right? Yeah, but the, the thing is, I think they don't go with the judge because then people might think they are going getting biased. Mm, like, like the the drama that happens with Oscars every year. That yeah, uh, mm. you know. So also there are chances to get more biased results. So that's why they pick to be like a popular choice awards. You know. Yeah. Based on, I, I feel like it's definitely the safe choice. Mm. You know. <laughs> but uh, I, I felt like like maybe in so, some cases, uh, you know, like again this year, Kai Senat won the, the streamer of the year, which I think Kai is such an amazing. I will. I'm I'm not like mad that he won. You know, yeah. like he's been winning for the past two or three years, right? Like he definitely deserves to be on top because of, like he does crazy things. Yeah, his streams are always so chaotic chaotic and uh you know even though i'm not a, like a kai active uh viewer i'm not in general of any of these uh, streamers nowadays uh because i'm just you no know, creating um, our own content so the time is very less but from time to time we tend to go and check uh, we watch the mick menage nikki menage stream yeah oh it was very hyped yeah. uh, in general in general you go to his streams and you get so hyped because the energy is like on top if, if you ever go to Kai Sinatra's stream. Yeah. You know, so. But but I felt like this year, I thought that Jinxie yeah. might have a chance of winning. Uh, I don't know. It's just like such a simple dude. It reminds me a bit of like Jim Carrey because he does all these, these facial expressions. And uh, mm -hmm. I think it's very naturally funny. Mm -hmm. uh, also... You know, I like his storyline as he started. And uh, I just think, like, this year, he, he probably deserved it. Uh, but, again, Kai did the, the seven days in, which I feel like was yeah. one of the best events. And I was so surprised he didn't won the, as event? the, the event. He didn't won the best oh. event award. Uh, it was seven days locked in in a prison. And I just thought, like, the whole idea of renting a prison and going and spending seven days with other streamers and a bunch of things happened. I thought like was pretty original. The The event that won was the Ludwig one. Mm -hmm. It was also a really good idea. Mm -hmm. Maybe slightly more entertaining because it's like a shorter time. It was like YouTubers versus Twitch streamers okay. dodgeball match, mm -hmm. which was pretty funny. So, so both of them are... You know, could have taken the the award in my opinion, but uh, he he took like Ludwig took. He, mm -hmm. he, I think even w him was surprised. 
But I feel like that's where maybe like sometimes like the 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 community yeah the community comes strong yeah and uh, because like it was like community maybe from Facebook uh, yeah. oh, sorry not Facebook YouTube, YouTube and Twitch, Twitch both. Uh, coming together for for that event in voting so, yeah so something which is like a uh, extra Emily even though I love her uh, she won this uh, uh, streamer of their own kind yeah yeah. And I think uh, she was also nominated for three, two more categories. And I think she was more deserving on those categories because I badly wanted to win that card boy, cowboy card. Or so that's, oh, that's ca car, uh, card boy, cowboy. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like he it, was... he's a small street. Like, again, yeah. again, he's super small compared to Extra Emily. Mm. Uh, I feel like Extra Emily is definitely a league of their own. Yeah. Because like she does like very original content, but yet I feel like the originality from Cardboy Cowboy, even though he's a very is small streamer, is just like insane. More significant, yeah. Um, w when it came like to the IRL streaming, uh, I think G Genie Genie T T Y T T Y. I think that's uh, how you spell. Uh, she's still like the the biggest one. Like she's the one who did this uh, walkathon or uh, run run. Uh, uh, people uh, were waiting. Yeah, exactly. She did oh, like yeah. a, she went to ta uh, Taiwan, and I think like she did like the whole Taiwan. That was incredible. Yeah, she's like the true high IRL mm -hmm. uh, streamer, in my opinion. Like she, w then uh, you know, Extra Emily does a mix of everything. She does yeah. some IRL. She does like some Event. desktop streams. They, she does some events. She, she does like a bit of everything. But I feel like you know. She deserved at least one award. I think Extra Emily in this year she popped off. I yeah. I'm a big fan of her work. Yeah. And I want to make this distinction because for me as a as a streamer, I become more a fan of their work mm -hmm. than as a fan as a viewer. You know, like yeah. a lot of people. You know, I don't watch Cardboy, uh, Cowboy, or I don't watch a lot of Kaisenat or even Extra Emily. But when I go and I look at their work, I see, man, these guys are doing original things. Yeah. They are like pushing the the envelope, you know. Like, uh, so I kind of enjoy and I appreciate like the innovation that comes into the the streaming field. I enjoy to watch the the red carpet, mm -hmm. but then, like you said, like the timing that that's like eight yeah. hours difference. So for us, was like super late already and it was like 1 30 a.m already and i was like okay the, the event didn't even started for us and i was like i'm 30 man i gotta go to bed <laughs> it's like yeah. it was too late uh, just in perspective it's not just about that it's just like we wake up at 7 a.m most of the days you know yeah yeah and also like uh, that that day we slept a bit late because of the streamers award and then after that, our sleep schedule is like all over the place. Now you're waking up at 10. It's so strange. Yeah. But anyways, like uh, I wanted to speak about uh, this. Uh, how, how did you like the outfits on the red carpet? Uh, I thought that uh, most of uh, the outfits were uh, were okay. It, it's exactly what we expect from a streamer. Yeah. They just go to Walmart and buy the no, not Walmart, but yeah, you know, but like they go like to to a normal store, suit store, and, and they buy it, and uh, that's pretty much what they are rocking. There was a few exceptions. Yeah. Uh, definitely, there were like three that come to mind. One, I think, the best that I saw uh, from the red carpet we saw was uh, Caroline. Uh, Will yeah. Snap uh, girlfriend. Yeah, you could see she put a bit of effort. Yeah, in she had stuff. like these massive uh, pearl. pearl collar that also yeah. came like to the shoulders and to the arms i, I feel like and she carried a really nice bag clutch yeah yeah, yeah. it has some yeah. ring uh structure and all that yeah i, I think like she really literally beautiful. popped off yeah. you can see and you can sense like oh she likes fashion and yeah. uh, she understands like um also, how can you leverage in your advantage? You know, like yeah. if you're the best well dressed woman or man going mm -hmm. to oh, to, the to the to the gala, you might have more attention than others. Yeah. And you no, know, for me, she was the best. Yeah. You know, by far. And uh, there was this uh, Nora the Explorer. Mm -hmm. She was best looking hair. <laughs> best hair. She Wh was looking. I think she was the most elegant. Oh yes. Uh, person on the red mm, carpet yeah yeah you know? 
uh, her jacket and the black and the hair everything was like very elegant yeah she she for me she was the second best you know uh, just because i think uh caroline went the, the extra mile mm -hmm. and but nora I, i think like she was looking fabulous you know yeah. like super simple minimal and, and yet super elegant so i feel like Those were my two favorites. Mm. The, the rest kind of was here and there. I was super surprised with Pirate Software hair. Pirate Software? Yeah, the, the oh. long hair tour. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there were so many men with the same hairstyle, same color, yeah. hair color. Oh, God. And they all blow dried hair that day. Yeah, I feel like he <laughs> went, I'm sure he went to the hairdresser or something Definitely. and he blow dry his, uh, his hair. Yeah. But he was like looking so big so massive yeah, like yeah, you could he, like he was doing like this interview and he could barely i love tour but like man the, the, i don't think he was <laughs> uh, uh looking as great in, in that sense did you see uh amaranth uh outfit no i did not it was terrible really yeah she was wearing all silver like disco ball mm -hmm. and the different shades of silver there Ooh. was like one whitish silver one like uh, gold goldish mm. silver It was out of the place. It was like too silver, too much of silver. No, I did, I did not see that one. Yeah. But uh, I'm not surprised though. <laughs> yeah, she she is not very much into fashion, it mm. feels like. Yeah. But you know what? Talking about like good moments, I feel like the best moment of the red carpet was uh, these new guys, the, the breakthrough streamers that they won. It's called ah. Everything Else Show. Yeah. I I and uh, they were so funny. Yeah, <laughs> they were like four guys, and they were getting like this That's interview, weird. and said, like, "What do you thought about it?" And then he put the mic on them, and they yeah. all talked at the same time. <laughs> and it, it was, was so funny. It was such a funny bit. Yeah, it made us curious to go and check their profile and see what do they stream. Yeah, right? I literally opened their profile yeah. on, on our stream, and uh, I went to check, and all of a sudden, like you could see, like. A massive like list of like thank you for following. Thank you for I think yeah. they've gone like probably like one thousand followers or even more in those like five minutes. Yeah. No, not even five minutes, like three like, minutes of the bit. Yeah. It was crazy. That's Cra how that's how important it is to represent yourself. Like whenever you get opportunity to, to have pop a off wider audience, yeah. You play mindfully. There was know? like two hundred and fifty thousand people. Yeah, core audience yeah. mainly core watching, audience watching a award show. Watching right? a war like if you were watching the award show, you're pretty invested. Yeah, in the streaming scene. So like there were a lot of people uh, who came, and we were like we completely lost the interest, you know. Mm. Yeah, and, completely zoned out. Yeah, you know. We were like, okay, who is this? Okay, we want to. We don't want to see them. Okay, who's gonna come next? Yeah. But these guys, they came, and we got curious. So that's yeah, how was you, the only ones. That's how you, as a creator, can literally grab your opportunity and take the take the thing out of it. You know. Yeah, it, it made me made me super curious to go and watch his streams. I yeah. still didn't catch. Uh, also, it's been like one or, or two days. Like, mm -hmm. uh, so probably they are still flying home. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, one hundred percent grab the attention whenever. Like, it made me really think about ourselves and like if we ever have the opportunity. Yeah. We have to really think about it in a yeah. in a really good way, right? So, uh, stream awards in general, I feel like it is. Um, you know, people used to call a meme show, but I think. Over the time, it is becoming more and more serious. Mm. You know, now you having Twitch more involved in it. You could see, like, you have we had festivals. There was uh, they were giving out Crocs. They yeah. were at TNT. Like they are having like better brands, and hopefully, in the next two, three, four years, uh, maybe we're gonna be there. You know, <laughs> like the uh, best shared channel. Um, yeah. But uh, above all, I feel like it's just great for the streaming scene. I hope more things happen uh like this and um yeah do you want to say anything else about like the stream awards yeah i wanted to say i just wanted to uh ask your opinion about ludwig wearing those balenciaga crocs <laughs> <laughs> okay i <laughs> felt like moment. ludwig was looking great yeah. even with those balenciaga crocs because i feel like a gala is all about looking great but mm -hmm. carrying something extra And I feel like the Balenciaga Crocs were the extra. 
Yeah. Personally, probably I will not use it, but uh, he's, uh, he's been using Crocs for years. It's like part of his brand mm -hmm. in a way, and he's also a Crocs investor now. Oh, really? Yeah, he reached oh, to the that top. I like, he used it so much that he uh, now represents Crocs. Mm. And that's why they were giving out Crocs for free to every streamer that was there. Nice. You could. Uh, Crocs is a. Uh, you know, it's one of those items. It's so curious that. Everyone feels to hate it, but everyone yeah. loves to wear them. Yeah, it's like you hate it, you love it, but you can't ignore yeah, it. Yeah, like everyone says, oh, these are so comfortable. And like yeah. you go to the to the hospital and uh, all these nurses and... Um, they wear Crocs? Yeah, nurses and mm. people that have to walk and stand uh, most of the day, they love to wear Crocs because they say, oh, like, this is so comfortable. Yeah. Like they look in that way. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Like looking that way, that's what really made them differentiate apart because you see someone with a Crocs, so you immediately know they are wearing Crocs. Yeah. So, you know, it's like one of those things that made it so distinct that they actually got like super, super famous. Mm -hmm. I never wear one. Uh, I think they look ugly. I don't know if they go my personality, but I can see myself wearing ones at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I don't know about carrying them to a gala or uh, yeah. these things, but... But also, like, when it comes to gala, I can... I think I won't be able to digest the fact that someone wore Crocs on the red carpet if it was something somewhere else. But it's a streamer's award. I see people doing this and it is acceptable for me, you know? Yeah. Because they have like these kind of personalities. Where but you also can see themselves. on the branding side, you know? Yeah. Like if you go to a very cliche, you know, uptight gala and you're wearing Crocs. Yeah. But it goes with your outfit. Yeah. But you, you know, it's a way to differentiate yourself. Yeah. And I, I think Ludwig has been running these, uh, these thing uh, for years and it worked for him, yeah. you know? And yeah. uh, that's just how it is. So now yeah. uh, let's transition a bit to speaking about new trends and new technologies that are coming here left and right. The first one, yeah. Apple Vision Pro. Yeah. What do you think about this? Well, uh, it is so popular and so trending in these days mm -hmm. that we made our boy wear Vision Pro. Oh yes, in one of those emote emotes on Twitch. The the, the sub badge. <laughs> yeah. I think it's the ninth, the, the sixth or the ninth month sub badge on yeah. Twitch. So apart from that, uh, uh, I see a lot of videos on uh, on social media, mm -hmm. people wearing these uh, Apple Vision Pro and then doing these, you know, and it is so strange for me mm -hmm. to accept this new reality. Maybe in future I'll get used to it, but the device itself is like so big. Yeah, and the it looks very futuristic. At the same time, it doesn't look very futuristic, mm. you know, because of the thickness of the device. Yeah, but I am kind of trying to digest digest this reality of like, uh, imagine we start seeing people in public wearing that. Mm. That'll be so weird for me. But I I don't think it will be for a still a long time. Uh, because I feel like there's this curve of uh, a product, like early adopters, mm -hmm. and the the people they are like the first buyers, right? Like mm -hmm. they they buy the product, you know, they they have like maybe also this finance because it's an expensive product, it's like three thousand yeah. five hundred euros or something like that, super expensive. Mm -hmm. But some people like to have the first one, you know, yeah. the first generation of everything. They yeah. like to do it. Um, but I don't think it's going to be for a while that you will see people, at least in Portugal, uh, roaming around with the Apple Vision Pro, I mm -hmm. think. But in the content perspective, it's pretty interesting because you, you know that, okay, I'm going to spend this money, mm -hmm. but if I make a few videos about Vision Pro, people now are searching and are looking for. So, yeah. so it is... Can, and probably if you're like a popular streamer or you're trying to go on the rise and you see it as an investment, okay, I'm going to have the products, but also maybe AdSense will pay for the, the product. For the product, yeah. So it's like a win-win situation mm. for many creators. I think uh, MKBHD mm. did like three videos. Each of them were like... Popped off? Huh? They popped out? Yeah, like 20 million views almost oh. each of them. Like 60 million views. Imagine that, like three videos. All of them, like, uh, uh, between, like, 15 and 20 plus million views. 
that's like a bunch of Apple Vision Pros yeah, that you can buy with it. That's true. Uh, also, you know, like it's on the top, of course. But uh, I just feel like as a as a creator, this probably new way that uh, maybe you know new YouTubers mm -hmm. and uh, or even streamers, who knows, will start doing Vision Pro content. You know, I saw this girl. Uh, she is like fashion influencer. Mm -hmm. I randomly saw the reel on Instagram. She was wearing this with her outfit, and it was just a walking thing. And she was uh, shooting with the with the Vision Pro. Yeah, and it was not uh, not a lot of it, mm -hmm. but she was using just as an accessory, mm -hmm. and that was interesting to watch. Yeah, you know. It, it it is again like a we, we can talk about Crocs or we can talk about the Vision Pro. It's a differentiating yeah. factor. Yeah, it is something that people still didn't see. Yes, you had GoPros and uh, maybe like VR headsets, but now like they are different, you know. Yeah. And uh, e even though people say, "Oh, Oculus," and we saw like um, Mark Zuckerberg, he came and he sat down like a billionaire on the couches. Pretty much <laughs> trash talking how Apple Vision Pro were so inferior compared to the Oculus. Oculus is like the VR set from Facebook, mm -hmm. right? Um, it, at some point, it doesn't really matter if the brand is not holding the value, right? Yeah. Apple is a brand, it is super powerful. And a lot of people just like to use it for status. Yeah. And they know that. You know, like you can see on the views. You know, like you know that if you're gonna if you make a video about the new Oculus or a new video about Apple uh, Vision Pro, mm -hmm. they're gonna be super different when it comes to views. You know, yeah. like Apple Vision Pro will most likely uh, take the win on it. It's just like that's how powerful uh, the branding of Apple is. But as a as a creator, I I see like man, that is interesting. You know, mm -hmm. like these. This kind of trade, maybe we're gonna start having like some new creators, as you saw, like innovating. And um, I think it's important for us to also look at these these things and think that how can I really sometimes use new technology or new things to create new trends? Mm -hmm. uh, for for a while, remember, like uh, this is a completely um, off topic, but in during COVID, there was everyone was at home. So it was not like you could go outside and shoot your outfit and all these things. Yeah. So it started popping off the videos about people buying those indoor treadmills, you know, that those very small oh, treadmills yeah, yeah, you yeah. put on the floor and then you're just walking and showing and your outfit. Outfits, yeah. yeah the, I thought like that was a good, interesting idea yeah. to, to innovate, you know, yeah. uh, because like those treadmills inside the house were getting very popular because people were working inside the house. Uh, they was like standing desk and they walk on those. Yeah. And other creators saw, okay, this is an opportunity they, that can they create content. bought it, yeah. Yeah, they bought it and they created content with it. So I feel like always pay as a, as a new creator or uh, as a creator in general, paying attention to these trends and how can you leverage, you know, make your content, but also add like this new trend flavor uh, to innovate, you know, yeah. and to break through. And also for certain content creators, if you're slightly established, I think it's worth it to take like these kind of changes, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, like you said, like he got like so many views out of it that uh, which is worth like more than one Vision Pro or something. Oh, like that. I, I think like probably it's gonna be like forty thousand. Yeah, so for for like creators, it is definitely a good invest investment, you know. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah, that it's like all about investment slash return, right? Yeah, yeah. So in talking about investment slash return, now we have once again OpenAI coming with a new product, which I feel like this one was one of the first moments that you saw a lot of people go, "Wow!" Yeah, we you showed it to me on Twitter, and I was like. It's so real. Yeah. We're, we're talking about Soma. It's uh, the uh, new OpenAI video generator. So if you go back like one year ago and you saw like these AI videos, mm -hmm. they were pretty clunky, pretty junky. You know, they... Like, really? I haven't seen those videos. Oh, it was really sure. bad. You know, mm -hmm. but it was a start. But people say, oh, this is like five years from now, maybe well, uh... 10 years from now. And not only, like, one year has passed, you know, if you make, like, the before and after, it is crazy. 
the like I'm sure it was it, it's not like still like super super realistic but it is at the same time you know like they will have the flaws the same way that Miss Journey had the flaws mm -hmm. but I can see such a big problem for the future because here's the thing we had this same conversation when it came to Mid Journey. Mid Journey, for those that don't know, is a AI image generator. Like yeah. pretty much, you, like any AI, you have ChatGPT. You put the, the text prompt. I want to create a script, and it, it, you know it puts, it gives you all the YouTube video script. Mm -hmm. Then you had Mid Journey or OpenAI now also does on the premium version that you put the prompt, give me, you know, here a uh, squishy with a cap and uh, on the beach and it's mm -hmm. going to generate an image where a uh, squishy is going to be on the beach. And now we have a prompt for video. You yeah. can say, hey, I want squishy to be on, 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 the, on, the beach, on the beach. Walking on the beach. And be swimming and jumping and uh, octopus. and then like a shark comes in yeah. and how can, can he even create that i don't know maybe probably still not maybe not now but not in future now. yeah and you know what i it just gave it gave me this thought that uh, what if they keep improving this video uh generate generator you know ai and the word people actually started making full length movies Mm. you know that is a possibility that the, they are everything they are creating online like in a movie format De definitely like b-roll for creators will be insane right yeah right now you you still go like to these websites with the stock videos and stock image and you use it for your content mm. right but a lot of times you still struggle to find the right one yeah you know you, you're paying or you try to go for the free version, whatever. And a lot of times you still spend so much time searching, yeah. you know, for the, the right clip that will convey the right message that you want to pass in a video. And I can only imagine like in, you know, in the future that this might be a problem for like, for those stock image videos ba banks you know yeah. like uh, like these online banks with a lot of content so i can see that ai it has to feed from something to create these to generate these things mm -hmm. you know like i was speaking uh, with david and he also gave me like this point that you know if ai is feeding from something as a source of material what if in the future nobody's creating anything yeah, what will be the source of... What is will be the source? You know, like, yeah. will the AI stagnate? Yeah. Or will have the capability to generate and create new things? Yeah. Because that's the thing. AI has the capability to create new things almost from scratch. Mm -hmm. Almost from scratch. They, there's always something that they base on. And then it's like when copyrights you know laws they come in you know like because it's picking up like some something from an original work and adapting and yeah. changing and i think you know what it's gonna be very confusing for the, for the near future i don't know how copyright laws will even they are pretty slow uh any law when in, in general yeah. like it's pretty slow to come in in a I feel like the, the the technology will just keep advancing and advancing and advancing, and uh, and I don't think like the law itself will ever catch on. Yeah, you know, like yeah. how it's gonna be. So, like, what what do you think? Like, do you see any concern about like these AI products coming in? What what is your opinion like about like these new generating content? I think uh, whatever AI generated things I see they don't seem to look very original to me. Mm -hmm. Unless you put your original ideas, you put your original uh, prompt to it, you know. Otherwise, it's like a very repetitive things you get. Yeah. And maybe this is the reality of now. Maybe in future it will change. But I feel that you'll have to be creative to get creative prompt to get the creative outcome, you know. So you got you you have to have that uh, brain. I, you cannot rely on AI. And the in terms of like, uh, is it copied from the original? I don't think there can be any law 
which can defend it because the variety is so vast you know that it is not original but you cannot also say that this one is copied from this particular mm-hmm. place you know so in that sense i don't think uh, i don't see laws of copyrights they're working yeah it's like the difference between inspired and copy yeah, right yeah yeah there is no particular form that you can say okay this is copied mm-hmm. it looks copied but uh, you can't uh, you can't prove it you know mm mm-hmm. because it's very small. Yeah, uh, except like if it's like a very very specific example in yeah. general it can create like so many options and so many things that yeah. it will be hard to pinpoint exactly what is the original source, right? Yeah. Um but do you think for example for because we are uh, sh- streamers no now doing this podcast we create we are content creators, right? But there is a certain set of creating content there is like people that they all they do in they generate is a uh, stock image and videos mm-hmm. you know so what do you think is going to happen to to these people in the future do you think that they will have to once again up their level to a point like oh i cannot just put like take a stock me- image of water coming on the cup hmm. because probably ai video probably say oh, just put it can do that like so easily to hmm. replicate it probably nobody will uh, use it so you have to push the boundaries in start thinking maybe in a more creative way yeah. e- even like just putting water maybe you have to make like a, a very different perspective, a different and, perspective like yeah. something that will be hard for an ai to replicate so easily right yeah That's true. I think these uh, these platforms who sell these kind of stock images and videos definitely it's very very challenging for them to face this this whole AI generation era. And the it same way uh, like I used to use Grammarly mm-hmm. to correct my grammar and then after a point they used to say okay you'll have to pay a certain amount to fix it in a proper way mm. like punctuations and all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah. and i never paid for it but i used to just correct my basic grammar yeah and now i put the same uh, paragraph on chat gpt mm. it corrects everything for me mm. so i stopped using grammarly i think same thing is going to happen to these shutterstock uh, and all these platforms you know mm-hmm. that no one is going to go pay for it if you, they are getting everything like uh, for free in a way you yeah. know yeah and in a lo- uh, at, at least like the base more basic stuff right yeah. so it's like will uh, with ai is gonna is like now you have the ai was gonna be and i agree with you the outcome of ai in general is pretty average and here and there it has like some astonishing thing you know like yeah but it is uh, for example we used we used to pay for the the premium chat gpt and uh, i feel like We took the juice out of it, you know, like it it was like $20 per month, mm-hmm. which is is a bit, but it's not a lot for what can give you. Yeah. But I I also understand like one of the consequences was we started to be so dependent on ChatGPT that we forgot to use our creativity. That was one of the things and mm-hmm. every time we were uh coming up with ideas The first thing we didn't even thought about original ideas coming from our brain. Mm-hmm. We were literally just instantly going to ChatGPT and uh and that was it. You know, like and yeah. and once the prompt comes comes with like 10 ideas, then you were like locked in in those 10 ideas. Yeah, I have like I have this feeling about it. So uh we see that uh, this time when tractors came mm-hmm. and in agriculture and then everyone was like okay what will we do now you know mm-hmm. and the a, a, a lot of people they had to use the tractors and all these agricultural uh, tools mm-hmm. for like the heavy work right for the heavy work yeah that doesn't mean that farmers they go sit back and they get fat you know mm. and they don't do uh, the yeah it's not like it's an automated truck right yeah it it means Yet. like <laughs> yeah it's like uh, you'll have to work on certain things you cannot be like okay now you sit back feed uh, like uh, trash food and then just relax you know yeah. same thing in this like uh, you'll have to be very smart to pick and choose these kind of tools mm-hmm. and at the same time uh, use your uh, creativity in other forms you know so uh, i think these tools are still new for us to understand 
Yeah. Like this these kind of thing and also they're not very advanced, you know, and though No, no, no. I feel uh, uh, okay, on that I think I'll disagree in one one sense. The tool itself is is advanced, very advanced. I feel like we don't know how to take the capabilities out mm. of it. Because, for example, I used to follow like this uh, this guy that is like a AI solopreneur, which is like a, a good emailing list, mm -hmm. and he makes like this very complex uh, prompts that you can put, and the outcome that you can have mm -hmm. out of the chat GPT was outstanding, you know. But still, when it comes to content creation, it felt like it was still not enough if you want like to break through as a creator. However, yeah. if you're looking to create that more, you know, tweets or uh, blog posts or the structures. The, the structures, templates and all these things, it was perfect. Yeah. I feel like ChatGPT can do that. However, I feel like there is a distinct smell, I'll say, that when you're reading a text and you know it's made by ChatGPT, <laughs> yeah. you know, like... There is certain language they follow. There is, like, a certain language. And even if you try to tweak it here and there, it is still not, like, perfect. But yeah. I feel like the capability, the lack, uh, the limitation that ChatGPT has nowadays is more by human input. Like, we are not putting enough effort yeah. in the prompt. Yeah. And we true. just say, give me 10 ideas to do a cooking video. And it gives you 10 ideas, like very cliche 10 ideas. Very cliche, very yeah. generic, very, it's nothing's going to happen if you, you make that. And you know what? You wanted to avoid those ideas and that's why you went to chat GPT to ask for the ideas and yeah. it gives you same ideas. Exactly. You know, But there was this guy on Twitter, he does like this a lot of AI, I think you know his name, I don't remember. He fed like a, uh, his the prompt was like uh, he fed his language to the mm -hmm. chat GPT. Yeah, it's, a, it's the same so, guy, AI solopreneur. Yeah, and uh, that was like okay, AI is like a intern mm -hmm. in your. Uh, it's like an assistant. Yeah, and you'll have to train him or or train her, whatever, and that's how you make it work, you know. Yeah, and the uh, it was so interesting for me that the he was treating chat GPT as an assistant, you yeah. know. You have to do this, follow this language. This is the format of my language. That's how I but use it. But how many people do that work? Not a lot. Or no. Yeah. That's the, how you use AI, right? I think uh, a lot of people have this misconception that uh, chat GPT, they use it as a Google. Yeah. Chat GPT is not Google, you know? Yeah. It's like, a, it's a different thing altogether. Yeah, that, that's where like the limitation is coming. But mm -hmm. I agree with you that people want to you know, just do the basic thing and then the AI will do everything for them, yeah. right? Uh, they don't see it as an assistant. They see it as a replacement of, yeah. I don't need to do this now. Yeah. Or I don't need to, uh, you know, the AI will deal itself. When, in fact, it's not more, it's not about that. It is about using the AI in a way that, okay, this is to take me five hours. Now mm. it takes me one hour, you know? Or two hours, you mm -hmm. know, which is already, uh, if it, you get like a 50%, uh, you know, decrease on your time. And if you value your time, mm -hmm. you know, those three hours that you just saved are pretty much already the $20 that you pay, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm still a big pusher and I'm a still big believer, but I still agree that in some cases, no matter how much, uh, in the content creation world, right? Yeah. You try to tweak, you try to push the, the, the you know, the, the prompt, and it, but still, it is feels like it's still not good enough. Yeah. Um, and you know, at least for what I want to do, it feels not good enough. However, like if you want to do like very uh, generic content and essay uh, and all these documentaries and things, yeah. maybe there is something there. There is the you have to go and test. I will. Ha I'll always say, please go test, play with ChatGPT, but understand that that tool, it is very different from anything else. Don't use it like Google. Yeah. Go also and search what are the prompts that you can use. Uh, you also have to make him act like this. Act like an expert of yeah. YouTube. Uh, feed him the language. Yeah. 
give him like some metrics, give him like the tone of voice. You, you have like so many parameters that you have to fill to have the outcome that you are looking for. Yeah. Also, like a uh, chat GPT is, is very helpful for me to put the structure. You know, mm -hmm. structure of like a script or a YouTube video script or anything. Yeah. You know, so you have everything like what I used to do. Like recently, I not recently, I a few months back, I used to do these newsletters. Mm -hmm. So what I used to do is like I write everything and then I go to the chat GPT and ask to put it in a proper structure. But mm. don't change the language. Yeah, don't change the language. Yeah, don't change the text. At all. Yeah. Just structurally in yeah. a in a proper readable way. Yeah, and it did a really great job. Mm -hmm. You know, it didn't change anything. It didn't make it sound like it's a chat GPT text because it was mine. And uh, but the structure was like so well written that it looks like a proper story. Yeah. In that sense, I think these things work. Yeah, they they, they work for uh, for many things. Like for us, we did our workout uh, plans. That was really good on chat GPT. That yeah. was like a, one of the best workout routine we have ever yeah, got. Yeah, was super, super good. We were doing the same workout for three months mm -hmm. and the, our body was like a painting like hell. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying it replaces, uh, the you know, per personal trainer. Personal trainer. Yeah. But I mean, for me, it was good enough. Yeah, you know? for me also. It was, it was really good, good enough. Really good it was. So 100%, I'm super, super excited for... You know the video the, one, the video, because I think if it keeps going like this for us, I'm always trying to find ways. Like we are two, you know. Yeah. I used to do this as uh, alone. You two as well. Now we're two, but yeah. still, it feels like there is not enough time, you know, to do everything we want to do. Oh yeah, that's so. So true. I'm always looking forward to. Is there any place that we can add? like these new AI tools to save us some time, you know? And you're right, like they are not perfect, but sometimes good enough is good for certain yeah. cases. Yeah, at uh, least to begin with. You know? Yeah, to begin with. Well, I, I want one AI generator mm -hmm. where I can put all my footage and ask them to put it structure-wise and it edits. Oh, is it like <laughs> like you you add all the footage and then creates the whole video? Yeah, like I put it in a proper format. Like this should be first and second, and you know, I uh -huh. that footage. Oh, you do like the sequence, and then it does the cuts for you. Yeah, that could be fun. I know. That It'll save be... a lot of time. Every if anyone is listening and <laughs> do, please is do one, AI. I will pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, a lot of people they will pay for it. Yeah, be it's like an AI video editor in that yeah. in that way, right? Yeah, I I think like it's coming. It is coming. I'm sure it will come. One it, day. it will come. Up. Yeah. Uh, I I feel like, you know, the job. There are certain jobs they will be replaced. There are others that they will, you know, will have to skill up. You mm -hmm. know, you will have to like the basic video editing or whatever it is will not be enough. You're gonna have to skill up. You yeah. know, because people will still hire the de designers. They will still hire video editors. They will still hire photographers. They will still because you still need a photographer to go and uh, and shoot the the, the the event or a yeah. videographer, right? Yeah. Like the AI cannot go there and and shoot for you. So you still need this. You also still need very high skilled people that can can understand your your brand. You create a new. Uh, language for your videos like you know like the branding side and all these things that pretty much I feel like AI cannot yet generate yeah. for you yeah. so if you're like starting out the best advice I can I can give like for a professional is just keep diving keep getting better keep, keep skilling up keep getting making your your editing or your design style or you know study understand the personal branding, understand all the strategy, understand mm. the world we live in because more than the hard skills, hard skills is like he's making yeah. the stuff, the soft skills of understanding, you know, having the emotional intelligence to come up with with new ideas, you know? And I, I can segue a bit like into this idea generation because I feel like is probably one of the biggest flaws that... I see people going, even including myself, you know, that I, I went through is if you want to break through, if you want to do something new, 
probably going to the AI is not the right place because AI yeah. it will most likely not come up with new things. And I I never saw like a new thing coming out of AI Same. whenever I was trying to do idea generation. He always picks up like existing things and tries to give it to you. Yeah. And I think I feel like the best idea that he gives me is always maybe like an eight out of ten. But if you want to create content, if you want to break through, if you want to do like, you know, things that will make you pop off, you mm. need a 10 out of 10. Yeah. You know, I think for that, you need to de- do like completely opposite to it. You'll have to get away from AI mm-hmm. and put yourself like uh, in a position where you just keep digging, deep yeah. digging, you know, yeah. inside your brain. And that's when you get those kind of ideas. Yeah. That, that from is your true. your subconscious brain or something like that. But... Yeah. Mm-hmm. AI is like a, there was this uh, there was this idea we had and it was like it doesn't exist on internet mm-hmm. you know and we were trying for AI to give us like some sort of episodes about it you know yeah yeah it was like we tried so hard to put uh, yeah. the prompt like we we spent like 1 hour yeah around like the prompt trying to tweak the prompt trying to, to give it- all the information we put like our relationship history, uh, you know, everything. Who am I? Who is? And everything we try to put, but it couldn't handle the new idea, which doesn't exist on internet yeah. now, yet now. And the, it was uh, giving like uh, all these ideas which were already existing and we got so frustrated. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah. I think we'll have to work It's on. like, okay, <laughs> well, it's time to, to stop paying for this. Yeah. <laughs> because that, that for me was where I potentially saw the best value in it yeah uh and it was not going according to the expectation so i feel like for the other basic thing that i use chat gpt the 3.5 the free version does it for me you know like uh so in that sense uh, i'm fine i'm fine with it yeah but you know uh speaking a bit like our uh, challenge you know that we're going through, we are realizing that, you know, we're doing the podcast, we're doing the streams, we're doing like the, the YouTube videos. And I, I'm I'm realizing, and I think you also realize after watching the, the streamer awards that th- there is something unique when it came to every individual person there. Yeah. And uh, I feel like for that, for us, is, is missing that uniqueness. And... Everyone has some uniqueness. Yeah. And sometimes it's like it's right in front of you and you just cannot see it. That's true. I, that's the one of the realizations I had when I was watching this uh, red carpet and everyone was talking about their work. It's like not a single person was similar to each other. I mean, they were similar. But if you see like a one player, uh, two players playing Minecraft. Mm-hmm. But the style and the branding and everything was so apart from uh, each other, you know. Mm-hmm. And the, that made me think like, okay, where are we now? Mm-hmm. You know, are we serving something which doesn't exist? Or do we have, let's say, certain kind of branding, you know? And uh, we also figured out like uh, we are not creating content to serve others yet, mm-hmm. right? That is like... A, that's, I think, the toughest part to figure out in content creation. Either it comes very naturally or it needs a lot of effort to pick that thing. I don't know. but it's I, like- I feel like uh, mo- most of the times it requ- everything requires some uh, some thought process, right? And s- some things are, are simple. Like, for example, you have 20 years of experience uh, fixing a pipe, so maybe you're going to make a YouTube channel about how to be a professional fix piper, <laughs> you know? Pipe fixer. <laughs> oh, pipe fix. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's like instantly, right? But in our case, like, uh, we are definitely already doing something different on, on Twitch. First of all, we are sharing a channel. Yeah. We are two. Yeah. So... The, the set expectation that usually there is on Twitch is like, it's going to be just one person, you know? So, but I see a lot of uh, people with the shared content. Mm, th- there's not, like, I will say, you when you say a lot of people, maybe because you're searching for it and then it starts oh. recommending you more. Okay. But I will say like Twitch, 95% is uh, only one streamer. You know, there's only yeah, one yeah. person. I agree, I agree. You know, so that creates a set of, of expectation that whenever you're watching a stream, you know, you 
expect one. Yeah, streamer. that's true. So I feel like this is our differentiate factor, you know, which is the good and the bad, yeah. you know, but yeah. definitely is a differentiate factor that we are two making it. The thing is we are two and we have very different interests. Mm -hmm. Our interests are not similar. So how do we put show as a one, you know? That's also one of the things which I just thought. No, how you show as a one is... Uh, okay, first of all, again, being different from each other, I think that makes it good, mm -hmm. you know? Because I, I'm seeing like in this way, everything that you think is uh, the wrong thing, mm. it is actually a good thing. Mm -hmm. So it differentiates... It, because it's the differentiate, differentiate factor, right? Like, your interest in, uh, what, fashion, uh, Bollywood gossip, uh, <laughs> what else? Yeah. Many other things that you even don't feel like to share with, uh, with the channel, right? Yeah, I don't feel like to share with the channel because I still feel that the Twitch doesn't have that audience. Uh, okay, if I start talking about fashion or something, Twitch audience doesn't care a lot about it. I will give you it. here three examples of people but, that went against that way of thinking and popped off. I know Dr. Off. K. Dr. K, right? Uh, genius, psychiatrist, interest in gaming. What about if I bring psychiatrists into Twitch and mm. I just start making content for gamers because gamers usually they tend to be alone, lonely, having some uh, sometimes mental illness or mm. some mental issues and all these things. Perfect. Thor, Pirate Software, is a game developer mm -hmm. for uh, 20 years. He didn't saw almost anyone coming and uh, just deconstructing that, hey, you actually don't need like 20 or 10 years to become a, a game developer. Mm. You Here's the tools. Here's how you can do. Hey, go do it. Right? Yeah. You have a son when nobody was doing uh, politic politics content or Destiny. They started doing politics content. You know? So these are just like three examples on the top of my head of people that went against what is expect. Okay. So tell me. Cardboard, uh, cardboard uh, yeah. cowboy. Yeah. You think it goes according to expectation that you're gonna see a, a cowboy uh, in the cardboard making like cartoonish things, mm -hmm. and it works. Yeah. You know. So I feel like that way you're thinking it is going completely against what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. What are you thinking? No, it made me. Uh, I'm just thinking it's uh, quite insightful. Yeah, so it's like I feel like in yesterday we were having like this this walk outside, yeah. and uh, we, we were thinking that what are the things that we can do to improve? Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, one the major things that I feel is uh, putting more of our personality yeah. and assume it. You know, I am like this. I am interested in this, and that's just how I am. You know, this will make you distinct from everyone else that is doing uh, also just chatting. Yeah. Uh, on top of that, I feel like there's a lot of things that we are doing that are considered like not as popular. Mm -hmm. You know, shared couple, yeah. uh, shared channel, live podcast. Yeah. You know, there's not a lot of live podcasts. Mm -hmm. It is a, it is still a niche, but on the niche is I feel like where we can pop off. We just have to find the right angle. Like I'm so, so sure like in the beginning, Dr. K didn't have like a lot of viewers. Like what the mm -hmm. fuck is this guy here coming on, on Twitch speaking uh, about, you know, uh, it, it is a therapy online. I'm sure he got like s some hateful comments even just because he was trying to do something different. And that's just how it is. You mm -hmm. know, first people just become like very isn'tent when it's something new and then they just start listening or admire you and overall you start popping off mm. you know but uh do you feel like you don't want to deal with that hate first no, hate no that, the negative it, comments sometimes that really doesn't uh, it it's not like that you mm -hmm. know it's it's my own personal struggle to come up with what i want to show what i don't want yeah. to show and also it is like, uh, again, the same limiting belief that this platform doesn't have this kind of audience. So 
But maybe it, I try something else which works for this audience, you know. But what what is this audience? Like what is no, this? Okay, thing? because so I Twitch is like, okay. Twitch has like a lot of people who are more interested in game that you agree, mm-hmm. and the there is uh I got curious sometimes to go and check uh, if someone is doing like this fashion content or mm-hmm. something like that. There is not a single person. It's not even a category there, and the. Yeah, so I was like, okay, this is this platform is for uh, like different kind of content. So I try to put like that kind of things. I will there. demystify one thing. First of all, you're not doing first only for Twitch. Yeah, you're doing the contents you're producing on Twitch. But where does it go after? YouTube, YouTube Instagram, Instagram, future TikTok, yeah. right? So you're not doing for that platform. You're doing the, the, the content for the platforms, you know? Yes, you can tweak it in a way that will make you maybe more interesting for the live stream, but yet also have in mind that, okay, this is going to be a cool YouTube video and uh, they, let me also create like some mm. cool short moments so I can create clips out of this. That's uh, the, the whole landscape of content creation that now exists. Yeah. So I feel like... You're right. It's all about like very limiting beliefs. And you keep talking about this audience. This, this audience that you're talking about is not even your audience. Yeah. You know, someone that watch games, they don't watch our stream ever. Yeah. yeah. You know, they can play games, but they, they probably enjoy to w- sometimes watch some games, sometimes watch nothing. Or a lot of people, they don't even play nowadays. They yeah. just grew up out of games and now they they still like the Twitch because probably they've been on Twitch for many years and they just moved to a just chatting category. Why do you think like the what are for you what, which are the categories that you think they are rising the most, like in terms of percentage? What are like the, the growing categories on Twitch? On Twitch? Just chatting. One first. One hundred percent, like the biggest yeah. jump. Yeah. You have traveling. Traveling I in IRL. IRL. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, well, this may be not like the most, uh, but beach pools and... Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I included it on Just Chatting. And hot tubs. I included it on Just Chatting, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, no, but that's also another category. Yeah. So the rise of these n- Just Chatting content, mm-hmm. it, is, it is an opportunity, you know? It is an opportunity and... Uh, like every time of the day that you go on Twitch, the mm-hmm. just chatting category will always have like five to six more times than any cat- uh, any category on the mm-hmm. platform, right? So I feel like I will agree 100% with you, like maybe 10 years or five years ago that mm-hmm. it was, I would say 10 years ago was 100% game centric, right? Mm-hmm. Platform only gaming. Then the past five years, Big transition, and especially after COVID, there's so many just chatters. And yeah. uh, who are the streamers that are popping off? Just chatting. Yeah. There it is, right? There it is. That's true. So, so I feel like we 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 have to deconstruct like these very limiting beliefs. Yeah. You know that Twitch is a gaming, you know, platform. It is, no, it's not. You know, you are using the Twitch as the best live streaming platform. The best platform to live stream. Yeah. You know? Yeah. YouTube, the best video platform. And uh, the other ones for everything else, right? So I, I feel like in that sense, we need, we definitely need to, if we want to one day reach to the streamer awards, we have to start deconstructing all or, these thoughts. Yeah. So, so we bring more to the table also i feel like we have or we should start speaking more to to the existing audience Mm -hmm. you know uh to understand like why do they watch us like what what is like the the interesting thing about watching us like for example uh david is saying like he watches us for for he likes the 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 news plus to know our opinion so that's one side, but we have to be and see multiple other sides. Why, why do people watch? And if you're listening to this, please tell us in the comments. Yeah. Uh, why do you watch this podcast and uh, or our live streams or anything? Because we're definitely searching for it. They'll be like super, super helpful. 
I feel like it will will demand a lot of work from us because mm -hmm. like we made this exercise, right? That uh, we made like this triangle, this inverted triangle, right? Where I feel like we are doing solely content for the main audience, for like the core audience, the yeah. existing audience. Not for the new audience. For Not to bring new, new audience, audience, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I feel like we have to to make like the shift there, mm -hmm. you know, to think about like, are we adding? Do people watch us because they like to see a couple discussing things? Do should we go and deep dive more into relationship content yeah. or into more the dynamic of creating content as a couple uh, or as a team, um, or? They like to know our opinion about like the news. I I feel like these are the three topics that uh, in general they go along mm -hmm. well together for us, mm -hmm. and um, and that's it. So this is gonna be it for now. We're gonna go into our Patreon section where we're gonna speak about long distance relationship, but also we, we have this part of uh, sharing that how did we met the second part. Also. Yeah, when they, we went to like to the Jaipur trip, we have like some. Yeah. Uh, gossip things uh, yeah. ab about it but also we're gonna speak about sexting so sexting yeah we're gonna yeah. speak about sexting it's gonna be a fun one so thank you for watching and uh, if you guys want to support the, the the podcast you guys can check our Patreon and I'll see you in a bit bye it's so funny how a simple mistake in the beginning turned out to be reality 40 <laughs> years later. Right? Something that happened in Jaipur that, uh, oh my god, I thought it was uh, gonna be my last days, you know, on planet Earth. I said I love you, <laughs> and what did you say? One Piece is real! Who you probably that? have uh, pictures Who? of my car in uh, every angle possible imagine. <laughs>